Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 214. I'm Ryan Thog Martin. That is Jeff the Funeral Commander Harbison. We have a special guest on today. We'll introduce in just a second. And this is the only weekly news show in the death care space. So uh, Jeff, 214, here we are. Yeah, you know, uh, it's 214 and also it's 2021. And so in my day job, you know, when I'm uh, not being a personality along, basically carrying your bags. But anyway, uh, with CNJ, I have a question for you out here, Funeral Nation. <laughs> it's 2021. <laughs> Do you know where your ARs are? <laughs> anyway, let's run that promo. We may be the largest insurance assignment company in the funeral profession, but that doesn't mean we've lost touch with our roots. Here in Rainbow City, Alabama, our priorities still come down to a welcoming smile and a handshake that says we keep our promises. With all the tools and technologies that assure blazing fast turnaround, what really matters is much more old school. Personal responsibility, integrity, relationships, and the pride that comes from hearing yet another client say, you came through for us when it mattered. CNJ eliminates the challenges that funeral homes have in processing insurance death claims. If cash flow is vital to your business, welcome home. Excellent. We have a, a special guest with us today, uh, Carlos from Private Label Caskets, which is, I'm excited about this conversation because there's a lot of things happening in the profession. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm excited to get into this. But uh, Carlos, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, the invitation. It's great to be with you guys. Um, yeah, I have private label caskets. I've, I've been associated with private label caskets since uh, we started it. And of course, uh, it's a company owned by the Buchanan Group here in Indianapolis. Uh, and we started private label caskets back in the 2007 timeframe, which is when we started researching it. And then we actually took our first shipment of product in early 2008. And uh, we've grown ever since. I've been associated with it. Uh, we've built a staff around it to really push the product line and push the business and get involved with our clients. And here we are uh, in the middle of or starting 2021 uh, with a brand new year. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Now, you guys have really grown uh, leaps and bounds. And now's a good time to be in the casket business where there was a time not too long ago uh, it, it wasn't a, a great time, but it was a difficult time. So now difficulties are there uh, because of trying to meet the demands that you're looking after. So Carlos, from, time, from the time that COVID started and up until now, what has changed for your company? Sort of production, overtime, distribution, you know, core products. Give us an update of, of what it's like on the casket side. Sure. Well, if you recall, uh, you know, the whole... COVID epidemic uh, started really back in early 2020, right? Uh, around the January, February timeframe. And really, let's face it, we, we import product uh, from China, right? And in the January, February timeframe, what's going on in China? They're, they're preparing for their New Year festivities and they were actually uh, getting ready to shut down factories and things like that. And what do we do as a result of that? private label really stocks up on inventory because that's what happens in early in the year that the factories begin to slow down and actually close for a while to celebrate their new years. And beginning in December, January, February, we really stock up. It's not unique to 2020, but in 2020, we did that and then so. And so we really uh, ramped up what we needed to buy and get things on the water headed our way because we sort of had an inkling of what was going to happen. So we really stocked up for the year. And that has truly, I'm not kidding, it has paid off because we've been able to service customers uh, the way we are accustomed to. And we have been able to get new customers uh, as a result of that to rely on what kinds of things we can provide because of our deep inventory and the way that we service our customers. That's awesome because if you look out, uh, there's actually been some news articles about some of the uh, providers in your space from the casket world that are struggling to keep up. And so you guys really, that was uh, a great decision and opportunity to serve them. 
Yeah, we have a really, really good relationship uh, with uh, the factories and uh, we visit them and we work with them uh, rather than negotiating with them. We do work with them. We try and help them through whatever problems they have because we have an interest in them being successful. They have an interest in us being successful. And so that relationship is a two-way street. They help us, we help them. And when we need something, they really respond. And that's what happened in this case. So we've been able to continue to deliver and provide the services that we're accustomed to. Awesome. That's fantastic. I mean, it, it, to be prepared like that, um, because like Jeff said, gosh, I, I mean, I got some messages yesterday from a few other casket suppliers of just shortages of raw materials and things of that nature. So, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. So that kind of leads us into like, how are you positioned for the next six months to meet the needs of that customers will have? And then as death rates hopefully go back to more normal. Sure. Well, as I said, we've got uh, plenty of product that is being produced and, on, and headed our way. And um, uh, so what maybe some people may not know is that we are certainly based in Indianapolis, but we have eight operating warehouses around the country and one in Puerto Rico. Uh, so we have uh, plenty of product. We feel we have plenty of product that is either in our warehouses already or headed to our warehouses. Uh, the one thing that we really uh, looked at, uh, believe it or not, the challenges of getting product here have been more on the domestic side than over in, in Asia. Um, and we used to pri primarily bring in product into the West Coast, but over the course of the last year, we have expanded that. And so we have begun to bring product at many other ports just to make sure that uh, the product can get through and get to our warehouse uh, and make it available to our customers. So we've expanded that for sure. Um, it hasn't been a tremendous impact on costs, some, but uh, we wanted to maintain our service level because our customers have high reliance on what we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we have done. Our, our, our warehouses are stocked and we hope to continue that here over the course of the next year. You know, it's really interesting, uh, Ryan, you mentioned death rate. And of course, we've got COVID-19 going on, but you remember way back a long almost when you and I met and you know, the big talk was baby boomers. <laughs> we thought that, in, you know, we're told in 2011, all the baby boomers were going to start dying. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, it's starting to perpetuate itself on that, that end. So, you know, with COVID, yes, it's, it's obviously the death rates up. I understand last year was about 15% total, but we're getting into the very beginning of what we'll have the largest generation that's alive now that's in the the death range that we'll be dealing with for the next 10 to 15 years so mm -hmm. uh, that leads me into I, I was going to ask you a question but you answered it in a bit but I'll ask you anyhow uh, you, you guys apparently made decisions that are way ahead of the curve and those have really paid off versus uh, maybe some of the others so what makes private label different from your competitors well, I'll tell you, uh, the Buchanan Group and Private Label and all of our associated companies, we are first and foremost a funeral home company, right? Flanner Buchanan is our premier company. Flanner Buchanan uh, has been around a long time. We're actually celebrating the 140th anniversary this year. And so we are first a funeral company and we have uh, funeral professionals in our company that we rely on to help us define the product line, define the service, and so we are funeral company first. And I think that when we go to market, we tell folks that that's where we come from and we know your pain and we experience what you experience. And uh, we have put a, a company together that has helped Leonard Buchanan uh, in many ways. Uh, we ha it has helped us to redirect resources into service, into better products, into servicing our community. And we share those things with our customers. And so we share those experience with them and we have found that our customers respond. I uh, so tell we, you that's are, we are oh, able to provide those kinds of services and that kind of sort of consultation and that input, uh, which I think that not too many other casket companies can do. Oh, no, no doubt. And it's interesting because the original, a lot of original casket companies were uh, funeral homes that had a furniture store or a furniture store, yeah. funeral home. Uh, furniture store making caskets in the funeral homes. Yeah. And I, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, actually actively working with a family and knowing knowing the 
intricacies of planning, making sure you had the right product there at the right time, mm -hmm. um, how to position caskets, you know, the importance of a casket, but the importance also of the ceremony. The casket support is basically a supporting actor, if you will, lack of a better word. And having that knowledge and understanding from a funeral home practicum, that is different in this side. So that's uh, commendable. So we'll, uh, we'll make sure that folks can reach you there. We've got the uh, 800 number and also your email. Sure. So uh, we wish you well. And, you know, maybe uh, in about six months, we'll uh, get back together again and talk about what's going on. Hopefully sure. it will slow down a little bit. But uh, yeah. I think uh, we... I, I firmly believe in my heart that uh, 2021 looked at 2020 and said, hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we think 2021 20, is going to be uh, better, maybe still challenging, but uh, hopefully yeah. better. So uh, we'll, we'll refine what we do and see if we can continue to do better ourselves. That's it. Yeah, well, well we appreciate you coming here. on. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for much, what you're doing. Brendan. Thank you for foreshadowing and, and serving the profession the way that you guys are. Well, thanks very much for the invitation. Hope to do it again soon. All right, guys. Absolutely. Out here. Till next time. Have a great effing week. Uh-huh. Take care.